All right. New York. Hello, Carolyn. Let's do it. We'll uh, kick it off now, and then the ones joining later, they will have to get up to speed. So, um, yeah, first of all, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Christian. I'm together with my uh, my colleague, Licha. Hey, everyone. Joining in from Copenhagen in Denmark. So it's, it's so, great, so great to see all of you guys joining this session. This is our first webinar. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Um, as mentioned, yeah, my name is Christian, and uh, I've been with Linkfi for the past five years working in product management and have been working on introducing the, the podcast offering and also working closely with Apple and displaying the Apple podcasts attribution data within our platform. And uh, Ligia, wanna... Yeah. yeah, hey everyone. So I'm Ligia. I'm a senior customer success manager here at Linkfi. I've been at Linkfi for two and a half years, maybe a bit more. I've been dealing with the majors on the music side, and it's really nice to now start to work with podcast as well. So welcome. Just a few house rules. First things first, uh, you're all muted um, with our camera and everything. So this is only for speakers. If you have any questions uh, as we go through this presentation, just add them in the chat and we'll pick them up in the end uh, of this session, which is around 60 minutes. Um, so don't, yeah, don't hesitate to ask anything. If you have it on your mind, just uh, add it in the chat. Um, our mission with today, um, with today's session is to touch base upon four areas. We'll clarify the important role smart links playing in amplifying podcast reach and engagements. We'll demonstrate how to build a powerful smart linking strategy um, and showcase the unique features and benefits of the Linkfire platform, both for, for building links, but also analyzing all the data that we collect along the way. And then in the end, also inspire you with the examples of how Linkfire for podcasts is used in the, in the wild to achieve growth and audience insights. So stay tuned. The agenda is, uh, we'll just start off with a, a introduction to you all around Linkfire. I'm not sure how familiar you are with, uh, with Linkfire and then our smart links in general, how to build a strong smart linking strategy. And then we'll also go through some onboarding on how to actually create and customize the links in Linkfire, uh, how our uh, insights work, the podcast analytics, and then inspiration and use cases in the end. And then we'll finalize everything with a Q&A. You might have a lot of questions. So we'll try and answer as many as possible. <clears throat> Before we dive into the, the awesome product, allow me to share just a bit of context about our company and, and also the partnership that we have with that, with uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, Slitja and I are joining in from Copenhagen. This is also where our headquarters is. But besides uh, our office in Copenhagen, we're also uh, present in LA and New York and have colleagues working from other parts of the world as well. At Linkfire, we have built a smart linking platform custom made for the entertainment general entertainment industry in general. We have our roots in music and have been working with music clients and music attribution data for the past 10 years. In the past year, though, we've ventured into podcasting and are really, really excited to further strengthen our product and presence within this industry as well. Uh, we work with, with the top 80% of the Billboard 100 artists. And since launching the podcast solution, we've attracted 20% of the top podcast shows trending on various charts as well. Our mission is, is pretty clear. We want to empower entertainment discovery everywhere. We envision a world where finding and enjoying content is effortless and seamless, whether it's discovering a new podcast or a new music release. Our goal is to ensure that every fan can easily access that preferred service every time. The centerpiece of our toolkit is the smart link, also referred to as a, a microsite. A, Creators rely on, on, on Linkfire daily to promote new shows, new episodes, or new music releases. <clears throat> These smart links, they connect followers and fans from social media, from emails and, and other channels to a dedicated landing page, offering various streaming service options, customizable solutions for, for example, merch store, cross-promoting shows, and many more depending on the objective there is for promoting the specific content that you might have. 
Lija will go through a bunch of this later on in the session. And then with just one click, the fans can choose their preferred service and instantly engage with the content that you promote. It's a seamless process that enhances user experience and also maximizing um, content accessibility. When people interact with smart links, you get valuable insights into what audiences like, uh, how they behave. And then what we saw, we, we saw how the podcast industry lacked a solid way to track campaigns, success, and marketing goals. And being all too familiar with the complexities of the fragmented streaming landscape that is also present in music, where uh, podcasts can be, in this case, be consumed across various platforms across different countries. We developed Link5 for podcasts to uh, one, help you not only creating beautiful landing pages, but also two, to gain valuable, valuable insights about your audience and your marketing efficiency. Unlike other smart linking tools, our platform goes beyond just intention, um, like social media spikes and downloads. We also give you the full picture from when someone discovers your show and when they listen in. So with our analytics, you can see how engaging, uh, you can see who's engaging with your content and listening or following your show in real numbers. So with that, we, together with Apple Podcasts, we introduced Link5 for Podcasts to break down the barriers of insights and to meet the need to better understand listeners with the core goal of growing the audiences for your show or shows. Engaging with your listeners and getting incredible insights into actual human behavior. We have received a, a, this question quite uh, frequent, so which is, but why you? Why did you partner with Apple Podcasts to bring this data? And over the, the, the years, we've had a great partnership with Apple that also allowed us to introduce Apple Music attribution data back in 2019. Uh, back then, revolutionizing the music industry and bringing this unique data to the market. And then not so long ago, we've also partnered with Apple Podcasts to bring the power of smart links into the podcast industry from discovery to consumption. And I will say, if, if there is one, th uh, one lesson learned from today's session, let it be that, that download attribution is, not, is, is, is only one part of the story. As downloads is a good indicator of intention, it does not equal consumption. Um, so we had the opportunity to go one step further and introduce something that hadn't been done before. So through our partnership, we provide Apple Podcast Analytics inside the Link Insights dashboards, uh, providing campaign-specific data. Um, and this means that in addition to all the Link Fire insights that Lija will uh, touch, on, touch upon in a bit, creators will also have the ability to see how listeners engage with their shows on Apple Podcasts using link filings, whether it's a fan following, playing or listening to a given show or episode. Um, so we're really here to help grow podcast audiences through real human actions. And with that, I want to pass the torch to you, Licha, uh, to go uh, next. Yeah. Thank you. Can I have the screen? Yes, you can. OK. Here we go. Hey, everyone. So before diving into the platform of True, let's talk strategy. So as Christian mentioned, our mission is to empower entertainment discovery everywhere. But everywhere can be a lot. So where do we start? We like to think about uh, strategy as building a house. So we are big fans of wrapping everything in smart links. And the way that you can organize that is thinking as a house where you start with a foundation and then you build on top of that. So just like any house, you start with a solid foundation. So this is the basic places where your podcast link is going to be easy, accessible for your fans. So we are talking about your social media bio, like Instagram, TikTok bio, but also automated uh, email signatures. And these are the initial touch points uh, essential for grounding our presence and making our podcast easy to find. And then after the foundation, we elevate our presence and build the first floor. 
So this is going to involve featuring your podcast Smart Link on its website, show page, in the media's company bio link, or integrating into offline materials. So this level here, expand your reach, uh, creating more ways for the listeners to find and engage with your show. Third one, now we are talking about the second floor. Now it's time to amplify your promotion by including your podcast smart link into the RSS episode or on the show description. Uh, also on social media posts and within content of your emails. And of course, as Christian mentioned, we are gonna show uh, some examples later. And this level represents the active engagement with your audience, maintaining and growing our listener base. And last but not least, the rooftop. This is the ultimate layer of your strategy. So it's time to amplify your reach, broadcasting your podcast through live shows, printed materials, advertisement, and PR efforts. So this part here is focused on maximizing visibility and drawing in new listeners via a variety of channels. So this is what we would recommend for you to start so make sure you check all the basics first so if your base is not solid enough uh, maybe you should still reveal that before you go to advertising before you go to other types of posts so start step by step we know it's a lot there is new social media appearing every day sometimes we get lost on the strategy so just start with the basics thanks amber it's nice to have you here <laughs> so now i'm gonna share I'm already sharing my screen. I'm not going to share my screen. I'm going to go to the platform so we can do a walkthrough on the Fire platform. So here we have what we call a board. So this is the main view that you have. You're going to see your links, some key data, and here is where you create a new link. So you see the button here on the up, uh, right corner. And the podcast link is the most important link type for you. So when you click here, you have two options. You can search by the show name or the title, uh, for the show title or the company name, or you can paste a URL as a source. So I'm just gonna show here. So I'm searching, I'm gonna select here. And when we're creating the draft here, we are not just pulling information about the show, but we are also searching the three platforms that we currently have automatic integration with, being Apple the first, of course, followed by Amazon and Spotify. So for those three, you don't need to add anything manually. We are gonna populate the matches ourselves. So this is how a basic podcast link is gonna look. So we didn't do anything to customize it here, but it's already to be shared like that. It is pretty simple, but it's also pretty efficient. So what we have here is the show cover, the title, the subtitle here that it can be empty, and then the description. Of course, we get all of these uh, automatic, so you can, you can always just adjust as you want, as you wish, and just keep it short and simple. And our podcast link type lives inside our bio link solution, which means that together with the podcast block, you also have the options to add several types of content and create your own micro site that you can feature. If you are a show uh, hosted, uh, a host, you can feature your show, but together uh, with the materials, you can add more for like images and shops, etc. And if you are a media company, you can feature several shows, you can do it in different ways. So I've created a new link earlier that I'm gonna show it because there's several content blocks so I can look how it, so you can, I can show how it looks. So here, this is the previous link. We have the edit here, so you click. And this is how the link it's live now. So this is the one that I customized. So you can see here that we have the cover, the description. We have some social media here so the user can click and go to the socials. We have the platforms. We have the recent episodes that we show here. You can just adjust if you want to show that or not. And we update this daily. So it should be always up to date. Here we have a video. We have a header that we can use to break the bio link in different sections. Then you have the website, you have some image block here that the user can click and go to the website. We also have a way to the user to subscribe to your mailing list. And all of these can be personalized here as content blocks. So you can see here 
the heading, just it's going to appear here. And every time you change something, it's going to take effect immediately on the preview here. If you don't want to have a section, you can just tug it off or you can remove completely. And this is how you can build your link. And here are all the link types that we have available. On the appearance side, we have two color scheme options, dark, which is the one we have now, and light. You, will, of course, have the option to upload a background. We are going to show some nice link examples so you can see how that can be built. And we have some options for the background effect as well. When we come to the settings, the options we have here is for you to personalize your subdomain. This is what we call this part here. So you can just use the generic bio.to, but you can also have a more in-brand URL. So for example, here we could call tenderfoot.lnk.to slash radio rental, for example. And here is the cost is the short code. So here you can just put the show name and that's how you can organize and keep everything in brand. We have this tag section here. This is just for internal organization purpose. So let's say you are a media company and you are creating links for several shows. Tagging it is a way for you to be able to search the link easy on your link feed. So this is the best way for you to organize your link. Okay, so this is the link. Let's go a bit further down on how to share your link and your insights. So the way you share your link, it is directly related of uh, how your insights is gonna look. So when you come here, you hover the mouse, you're gonna see that we have this get. When you click here, you have a landing page. And we have these, which are called our channel feature. So these uh, channels are these two letter code here that are gonna help you to track where your traffic is coming from. So of course, we have a way to do this using the referrals, which are the top level information that we receive from the platform when the traffic comes from there. But that doesn't allow you to break what it is a campaign, what it is owned, or if the user is coming from an email, for example, or any encrypted source like Telegram or WhatsApp, we don't get the referral information on that. So channels come in place to actually, you can make sure that you track uh, all the traffic that you are getting to your links. And when it comes to the Apple analytics as well, to the Apple attribution, this gets even more important. I'm going to show a bit later, but it's also a way for you to attribute number of followers and place, for example, based on a specific marketing channel or campaign. So let's say that I'm going to do an email or reach out with this link. So I come here and I copy the email. This link, this list here is totally personalized. You can do on the board settings. So this here is just a basic channel setup that we have on this board. So the link itself doesn't change anything. The link is here, it's pretty much the same. But with this two letter here in the end, it's what's gonna allow us to see and say that the traffic came from an email campaign. So when you go to the link insights, which is also here. So you can see that the link had 42 visits, 33.33 bounce rate, 28 click-throughs and the click-through rate. You have the chart and then here you're just gonna have a summary. So the insights on the link, they are breaking to set in three sections. So you have the summary, you have the content blocks and then you have the breakdown on the traffic and Apple analytics. So the summary is just top level countries, channels, etc. And here on, on the content blocks is where you can see uh, the data more in depth. So first one is podcast platform. So from all the clicks, the visits that you got here, the click throughs you got here, the 28, how many were from a, uh, to a podcast platform? So you can see that five were for, for Apple and then you have Spotify and then you have Amazon. When you click here on each of those, you can also segment by what was the device that the user was accessing from which channel. So here you start to see the importance of having channels applied. So you can actually attribute a click to Apple to a specific campaign or channel that, uh, or reach out that you did from a specific city and country. This, of course, was all me clicking around before the session. Here on recent episodes, if the user consumed the content by clicking here, you can see which episode they click the most. And you can also, again, attribute that click to a specific device, country, city, and a specific channel. So all the link, all the content blocks that you add to your page, they are going to add a new row here when you look into the insights. So if you're doing external link like these two here, 
We are going to show the description that you have here and then the URL that the user lent. And if you have the image, we are going to show the expect ratio, the call to action, the URL. So everything that you add to, to your landing page is going to generate another row of data. And yeah, for email sign up, for example, if you change your call to action here, you can, it's going to generate another row. So you can, oops, so you can actually see depending on how you phrase that, if the user is willing to give to subscribe more or less, so you can do that. And social, of course, is just going to show on the social media icon that the user clicked the most. And here in the breakdown, it's I'm going to go straight to sources, then I'm going to go back to Apple Podcast Analytics. So when we talk about sources, we are talking about how your users arrived and where is the traffic coming from. So if you don't use any channel, everything is going to be booked under no channel. And the issue here is that sometimes we are going to have the referrals, everything booked under direct. For example, if the user is using an encrypted uh, browser, all of that. So this, it is really difficult for you to read the data and understand your traffic. So make sure that you use your channels, even more when we are talking about paid efforts or internal marketing campaigns that you need to report on uh, return of reinvestment or KPI. So this is a really easy way for you to understand how your link is behaving across different channels. And also because for each channel you have the click through. So this is also really important. If you are doing a marketing campaign on two different social media with the same budget, this also can help you to understand if the same uh, number of users coming from Facebook and TikTok landed on our landing page, what is the conversion rate for each of these platforms? Maybe your show has a better uh, conversion on Facebook instead of TikTok because maybe you are talking to an uh, older audience and TikTok is more like a younger audience. So this is a really nice way for you to understand the user, uh, how, who you are talking to and how your show is performing across social. And here, the location devices is pretty much where they use this base, which country, which city. Yeah, so that's it. And now for the most important part on the podcast analytics, I'm going to move to a dummy link that we created with some data so we can show. So thanks, Amber, for letting you us use the visuals from Lemonada. So again, this is a, a dev environment, so this data is not real. So here it's how the Apple uh, data is going to look. So we have four uh, key metrics, followers, how many users follow the show after clicking on a link for a link, plays, how many users listen, uh, play uh, episode coming from a link for a link, listeners, how many unique listeners listen to your show coming from a link for a link, and our new metric, which is engaged listeners that we are considering engaged, engaged listeners, uh, users that uh, listen to at least 20%, 40% of our show or 20 minutes. So each of these metrics here, they're also going to have the breakdown by show, so by which episode the user consume, by country and by channels. So for example, if I click on followers, <laughs> of course something's going to break when I'm presenting. <laughs> When, when does not happen? One second, everyone. I, I need to log in again. Mm. Yeah, this is always the case when presenting. Sorry about that. I know. I don't I'm, even get nervous anymore. This happens every time <laughs> I'm doing a session. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's how it is. I will also say thank you, Tenderfoot TV and Limonada, for using your visuals in general in our marketing efforts and and this presentation as well. It's really helpful. Okay, I think I'm almost there. Cool. You can just maybe turn it down if it's fine. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes. Yes, we are back. Mm -hmm. Here we are again, so I hope I don't get kicked out again. So, yeah, so as I, I, as I mentioned, we have the four metrics, and every time you click on one of those, you can navigate here. So you have uh, 600 uh, followers coming from this show link, and then you can see which episode actually drove that follow, or you can see the country, and again, you can see the channels. 
So if you are doing a, a Facebook campaign, you can actually understand uh, how, how many folders that actually revert. So this is a really nice way to keep track of your KPIs from any campaign that you may be having. And number of plays, everything you can just see here. So plays, which episode the user played the most. You can see the total. You can see the breakdown by episodes. Listeners, same thing, which episode. And also the engaged listeners. So what are the episodes that people actually listen to at least 40% or 20 minutes of the show? One thing that is important to mention here is that we have an anonymous threshold of 10 actions. So if we, within a day we just you just had, for example, six people clicking to listen to your show, we are not going to show that on a daily basis, but let's say that it, on, during the week you had more than that, then we are going to show. So just keep that in mind that sometimes it may take a little bit for the data to appear here due to this anonymous treasure. So yeah, as I'm getting to an end, I just wanted to highlight again that all the engagement with Linkfire Smart Link is aggregated and, ano and anonymized. That's why we have the 10 action threshold rule. And we do not use cookies or collect any personal identifiable information. Mm. So it, actually, this is one of the reasons why Apple chose us. They know we do a good job at that. And now I'm going to just go briefly on the use cases and the links that are out there so you guys can get inspired and understand how much you can do with Linkfire. So first, first one here, it's uh, Dear Media, which is an early adopter of Linkfire for podcast. They are the biggest female marketplace in audio and they host around like 70 shows. In this slide, you can see how they made uh, use of our BioLink solution. So they have on the left, they are using their bio across all their social. So they did the foundation really well. So no matter which profile they use, user lender, they are going to find their content. And also on the GIF on the side is the way that they build their bio link so they can highlight several shows that they have. Like they are a media company, they are not just a host. They have several shows and this is how they highlighted everything on one bio link. And then we have here uh, Lemonada uh, use case. So they are also one of our earlier adopters and we love the work that they are doing. So here you can see how they made use of a podcast link to launch a new show ser series. So they use the link on all their materials, including the email. And they use on the email using the correct email channel, which would allow them to uh, attribute all the players and followers and etc. to this specific email reach out. Here, another one from the Monada that we had in the past weeks. And this one is an example of how you can use Linkfire links on your RSS feed. So it's distributed across all the platforms that your show is available. So in this case, football cliches were moving into a new home. So they use the old show feed to drive the users to the new one. And we saw really good results on this strategy. And yeah, if you're unsure where to use and how to use our podcast, here are some great examples. So Tenderfoot, as we mentioned, Koala Kids and Dear Media all using the, the podcast link on their bio. We also have some nice examples here, as I mentioned, that you can uh, customize your background, you can add texture, you can add visuals, you can add images, you can just build everything in the way that you think it's going to be most appealing for, for your audience. Here are a couple more examples. So you can go from the pretty basic one, just creating the podcast block and not adding anything else to actually use like image blocks to build your layout and adding arrows and making everything more engaging if you want to. But we haven't seen good results no matter what the layout. So yeah, I just hope these examples have brought some inspirations and ideas for how you can or if you don't want not customize the links. And now we, I think we can move to the Q &A. To the Q &A. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we have received a few questions in the chat, and uh, not that many, but if you have any, just send them in. I'll be happy to pick them up. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 <clears throat> there is one asking, how do you guys manage episode attribution? 
do we have to create a new link for every episode? So we have a feature called recent episodes. Um, when you create a, a link, you automatically populate the podcast platform and you have the toggle to include the episodes or not. Every day, if you include the recent episodes, we rescan the automated services, which is Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon. So if you have daily episodes coming out, they will be rescanned every day. This makes sure that we keep the link up to date with the recent episode, but we also attribute all clicks, all listeners, all followers on, on Apple Podcasts to that specific ep episode within the same link. Uh, so that's the structure of how everything works right now. Uh, I can get Simi's uh, question about the podcast network that has several different shows. So I think the best way of doing this is actually creating one link per show, one link fire link. So you're going to have the attribution data per show and then creating one for the network to group of all these links. So I'm going to show not this one. So, for example, this is how Lemonada is doing right now. So they have all of their shows here. And when you hover the mouse here, you can see on the footer that all of these are also link fire links with the specific channel that it's bio link. So when they look to this link uh, insights, they can see how many clicks each of those got it. And when they go to the show insights, they can also understand how many clicks from the show came from their own bio link. So I think this is the best way of doing that because you don't mix up the data per show, but you still can understand a lot how the user is clicking and consuming here. So if they click on the hard feelings, for example, this is going to show as a click on the Lemonada bio insights. And then when you go to the hard feelings insights, you're going to see that the click came from the Lemonada bio. So yeah, I think that's the best way of doing this. Um, Yeah, we also have one. Uh, what's a good benchmark for a click to Apple podcast? Listen, where should we aim? Richard, do you mean the ratio from when you click Apple to the listener ratio, or is it from the link to Apple? Just to, if you can clarify, but yes. Um, so what, what we see I mean, there is there's a lot of um, there's a lot of local influence depending on on, on how many is actually clicking on, on Apple from the link. When we're talking about Apple to listen, we have a rough benchmark right now, which is around 20% conversion. Um, might be different depending on on country to country, but that's like the the kind of the the flat conversion that we're seeing right now uh, across. Various links. Around 20%. I mean, some shows convert even better. We also see really successful cases of driving followers when you, uh, in, in, the, in the initial phase of promoting a new show, uh, that then drives listeners on the long run. Um, Specifically for listeners, that's around 20%. Plays a lot higher. Uh, do you know the yeah, best Yeah, I would say channel? the same. It is pretty yeah. much like music. Because I, I think when you are talking to the user direct, like via email, newsletter, you have a, a direct touch point with the user. And they, they are more willing to consume the content of something that they subscribe it to. And they actually want to engage with that. So definitely we see the conversion rate higher on email or any other like Telegram, for example, if you have a group, then on, on a Facebook generic ad. So definitely when you have more uh, uh, more personal touch point with the user, definitely the, the conversion rate can be higher. And uh, about Angles, you asked about the default look. So right now, no, you cannot set anything as a, a default on that sense. But for example, if you if you are creating a link per show, then the, the only matter that you are going to have to update is pretty much nothing because we rescan the links every day. So if you build that once, you don't need to go and edit that every time you want to do. 
We definitely understand the reason behind when I have a default, so you don't need to upload background, etc. But right now, it is just a one by one case for link creation. Yeah, <clears throat> we also have a question. Uh, we've had a bit around our recent episodes and how you can add customization so that right now it's completely automated. So you can't edit anything. We'll pretty much pull everything that's the newest episodes from the integrations we have. We are working on a solution where you can remove episodes as it's mentioned in the in the comment here, it currently pulls feed drop episodes as well, which might be confusing to the show. Um, to answer that specifically, it's not something we have right now or coming in the near future right now, but we are exploring different initiatives to solve for that. Hope it, it answers the question. I think we got everything, but I just want to uh, uh, mention the question from Charles, like how do we keep this completely free? And I'm just going to second yeah. Simona here. So we have different pricing plans. We, of course, have a free plan, but that has limited features. So most of our customers, they actually use like a paying subscription and we have a, a pricing page on our website that you can check. I'm sure we can you can find something that actually fits your needs. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, do we miss anyone here? Okay, yeah. Thanks for joining my chat. See you now. Yeah, this is a really nice suggestion, Simi. So we have been thinking about optimizing our social cards so we have more option and it's easier for the user to, to share it out there. It is definitely a happy to have something like Spotify has, which is amazing, and I'm a big fan of that. Coming from, um, from, coming from music marketing, I understand how important it is and how easy it is to just go copy and paste. So... Uh, Right now, it's going to show just like the thumb with the cover uh, that you have on your link and some like quick description. But we have been looking to having more options for the social card. But right now, we would have the image and just a quick description of the, the description that you have on the page. Anything else? Okay. I can circle back on the on the uh, Apple data that we're seeing in our end as um, we do see a lot of campaigns having more followers than listeners, which is quite interesting as uh, as that's an indication of the intent. Um, so running these uh, pre-launch campaigns are really, really helpful to drive long-term listeners and engage with your fans. Um, we will be looking more into this data as we go and as we grow uh, our conversions. So we have a larger pool of um, of, of data to uh, to analyze from, and then we'll publish some uh, some news around that and some uh, some learnings as well. Um, I don't see any other comments coming in. I think we can I don't know give it thirty more seconds. Otherwise, thank you. Uh, for joining everyone. I hope you really found this um, insightful and uh, learned a lot. Otherwise, always feel free to drop us an email. Um, we're happy to also jump on calls if you have other questions going into more uh, details. Um, so yeah, reach out. Yeah, I'm just adding to the chat our support email for podcast. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And in the end of the session, probably tomorrow, then we are going to send the correct email with the recording of where <laughs> we are going to have access to that. And we are also going to, going to send you kind of like a bio link of all of our Help Center articles so we can just navigate if you have any further questions. And yeah, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you find this valuable. It was our first experience doing it, so I hope you enjoyed your time with us. 
And yeah, that's all for today. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.